what do you say to the basic argument you hear around charter schools, which is, you know, the vast majority of kids are in traditional public schools, charters are just serving a few mm -hmm. families, um, you know, comparatively. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we be spending all our time, our energy, and our resources trying to fix what's going on in traditional schools? We're going to have a generation of children, say, say kids now who are under 10 or whatever, they're never going to know that there was a time when there was only one option. And so the, 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 the idea that we can somehow, oh my God, let's, let's just go back and have the, the traditional right. system, that's not happening. So if we're smart, which we're not, you know, as a country, we would be focused on how do we strengthen all three sectors? How do we make sure that the poorest parents have access to all three sectors? Right. How do we develop the talent pool that we're gonna need to, to make this work? How do we change the policies and practices that set up our system during an industrial age when we're now in another age. We, we, we have people who are excited and working very hard to get better at 20th century approaches <laughs> instead of understanding we're now in the 21st century. How do we take better advantage of the tools that we have for the 21st century? And so, so what, what, what I'm trying to suggest is that no matter what people think about, oh, we just need to just put money into fixing the system. That is not a strategy that is possible, you know, for the future. And, and it's going to be less possible as the years go by. The question is going to be whether or not we're smart enough to maximize the potential in creating an entirely different way to educate our kids going forward. What is the education reform movement getting right? <clears throat> what do you think it's doing very well now? I, I, I think what it has done you know, relatively well. It, it has shown that if you have the kind of leadership, resources, grit, determination, smarts that people like Kip have, or a friendship, you know, in DC, or Aspire, or Achievement First, or Uncommon, if you have the kind of relentless dedication that someone like Wendy Cobb had with a great idea to create TFA. If you look at some of the other offshoots that have happened, you know, that are reform-minded organizations, we've proven that these things can be created and that there's a way to get to excellence, at least in the short term. What we, what we haven't done is to figure out how to not just engage, but empower the people whose children are being impacted by the work that we do. We're, we, we, we are still coming, we, this movement is still too white. You can't, in, in spite of the, the, the good work that people are doing, long term, if, if, if the people whose children are being impacted do not feel that they are truly empowered, there's going to be pushback. And so the pushback is, is happening. I mean, it's happening in Newark. I mean, it's, it's, it's happening in New Orleans. And, 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 and so what, what I'm saying to people is that we've got to figure out how to take all of the great lessons that we've learned and the positive things that we've done and say, but over the next 10 years, the focus really has to be on how do we empower people in the communities where this is happening so that they feel that they're a more integral part of what it is that's going on.